Uh, so, uh, solidity lunch time so i'd like to be quick so uh, thank you thank you uh, for starting i would like to thank the organizers for selecting my abstract uh, for a short contributed talk so my name is sunny gupta and i'm a postdoc at uc berkeley berkeley and today i'll be telling you about one of the works that i did in my phd here at rice university with professor jacobson on how we can use 2d monolayers and different different to create interesting electronic electricity so until now there have already been talks on uh, studying the physics of different uh, strong, strong nuclear electronic phases and one of the recipes to realize, realize the things is to find materials where uh, they have a flat electronic lines so that the kinetic energy will be affected by the and electronic interactions will become the part of it so today i'll be telling you about a different way to create uh, uh, Flat electronic state, which is different from different from monolayers, as well as heavy permeable permeances. And this is by combining 2D monolayers and effective topography. So the idea came about from a simple observation that one cannot draw paper around. So paper is flat, flat, and and ball ball topography. And since paper doesn't have elastic property, without cutting the paper, we cannot just fully conform the paper around the ball. This is analogous to our skin, so uh, uh, has elastic property. And when the end of our skin conforms to the topography of our face, and as we grow old, the skin loses its elastic property and it forms wrinkles. Even it's fine. Even though thirty, I still have wrinkles on my face. So uh, analogously, two D materials are flat, and uh, when they are grown on grown with a different topography, they can conform to these uh, substrates, and the substrate can be like hard strains or two D material. For example, here is a plot where a two D MRS two was grown on a substrate with the shape of a donut. And this and the tools used to impart strain to the 2D MRS2. So this is the plot showing the strain. This at a value of about like roughly two percent was achieved. So strain is very interesting because it can be used as a tuning parameter to change different uh, to uh, the electronic phases. But but known that uh, the band gap of the MRS2, for example, can be changed by applying a tensile strain. So strain U creates a deformation potential T and it acts as a potential term to the Hamiltonian. So imagine if you're able to say apply periodic modulation of strains. For example, if you take say boron nitride and deform it in the shape of an egg cart, what you do is you will create this periodic strain. What periodic strain pattern will do is it will create a periodic confinement potential, and that can create like electronic balance. So again, uh, speaking, the kinetic energy will be suppressed and electronic interactions will become important. important. So this sort of idea is quite general. It sort of will be, uh, I think, will be applicable to any 2D semiconductor and can be used to realize electronic flat bands. But I will right. be showing you with an example, right. example nitride, right? by that just system is a bit special. Special. If I design some sort of the part, you can realize interesting one D one D scale. So low energy effect in Hamiltonian of boron nitride resembles that of graphene, where we have this extra term delta because of the band gap. And the presence of strain U, we have this additional additional yeah. pseudo scalar field and pseudo pseudo and this uh, so, so U creates the pseudo electromagnetic fields in boron nitride. So by, so by designing substrates, one can tune these pseudo electromagnetic fields and create interesting electronic states. And the idea is we take a two D semiconductor, put it on a certain substrate, and the substrate can be used to impart strain to the two D material. So for our case of boron nitride, we took this analytical shape, which is set to an Eckhart. We use the continuum classification, the purple one common equation, equation with get the strain fields and the displaced space. And using this, we use it to relax the structure. So this is the relax, the relax right? So the crest, crest, and right. are slightly compressed, side point is slightly right. stretched. So since the since shape is analytical, one can right. analytically calculate what will be the pseudo electric field and pseudo magnetic field. So this is the plot of pseudo electric field and magnetic field as a function of x and y. The color represents their values to use. And this particular plot here shows uh, the value along the x, x point. So you can see that firstly, there is this periodic confining potential, which can create these planning states. But most certainly, the pseudo scalar field depends on both x and y, but pseudo magnetic field depends on y. So this this shows that in boron nitride, a combination of these will create interesting electronic field because we get an anaplaning potential. So see uh, that indeed that's how I calculated the electronic structure using DFTB. So this is the band structure of pristine boron nitride, which we use the band gap, which is expected. And in the case of modulated boron nitride, we, we see these additional states appearing in the band gap. For example, so this particular state here, shown in red color, has a bandwidth of 39 mEV. When I plot 
the eigenstates of uh, this particular band of the space you find is that these are just localized along one direction. So these are just one direction. So in order to again confirm that in these states, I used the rows kind A band type band type model to fit this band structure. So here is the uh, band, the same band here, and the red bands are affected are fitted using the simple type band type model. So again, from this type band type model, uh, I get the get that the parameter is an isotropic. Talking along y with respect to respect to axis point one again contain contain these are one D electronic states. So, so and then I have told you that when these these, these states can arise and isotropic pseudo electromagnetic fields. So in order to check that, I I calculated the electrostatic potential. So in this particular plot here, I show the electrostatic potential V plotted along x and averaged along the other two directions, and similarly this is plotted along y and averaged along the other two directions. So one can see firstly that there are these rapid uh, modulations, which is expected. And on top of that, there is this long range modulation because of strain. And uh, what, I, what I find is that is the depth of this potential is quite an isotropic. So you can see that along X and along Y is different. So that indeed uh, pseudo scalar and magnetic field is responsible for this and of confinement. So here I have shown that 2D material can be used to create 1D finding states and realizing 1D systems is very difficult. And so this sort of simple way can be used to create weights. So there have been uh, talks before where we have already talked about the interesting physics in 1D. So here is the phase diagram that I take from above this public. So depending on the chemical potential mu, which is the kinetic energy and angular pressure u, one can have different sort of interesting phases in MD. For example, multi-chain liquid, Martin's modulus liquid, bond order wave, etc. What we uh, predict, what we show is that by taking the nitride and by just changing the topography of this deformation, one can go from one phase to the other. For example. Here I plot the band with the flat band as a function of this periodic modulation L and epsilon, which is the strain, which is which is the sum of that of the aspect ratio, which depends on the aspect ratio. And the blue curve is, uh, is the band width, and the red is that of the length. So one can see that by, by changing this topography, one can hop over from one can change the, the value of u with respect to w, and one can hop over from one place to the other by just changing the changing of the so here I'm here on a simple way of how we can realize different phases by just changing the topography of the 2D material. So one just have to deform it in some specific way and then can realize different learning phases. So many of the many would be wondering as to how stable these 2D materials are on the substrate. So for example, if I take this 2D material and stamp it on this particular substrate, what might happen is that there might be regions where the sodium steel might just delaminate from the substrate. It might not be confirmed. So in our theoretical analysis, what we have assumed is that the studio material sort of fully conforms to the substrate. And for it to fully conform, the surface pressure much, uh, must uh, uh, match the adhesion force from the substrate. So we need to find substrate or substrate with sufficient adhesion energy. So here is the plot. I show the maximum uh, surface pressure as a function of this aspect ratio of the substrate. Okay. substrate. This is the red line shows the maximum adhesion force required to sustain the pressure. So for for example, example, typical substrates have an addition energy of 20 to 40 mV per angstrom square, like for example, like bulk silicon oxide. And from this relation, one can predict that a maximum strain of roughly two, three to four percent can be engaged with uh, such a substrate. So uh, I think uh, I'm done. So with that, I would like to summarize. So yeah, here I've shown a simple way by combining binding monolayers as well as different deformations by, uh, achieved by different topography. Uh, so combining those two, those two things can create different quantum phases. For example, with the special case of boson nitride, one can realize interesting one day, one day states by this particular arch topography. So uh, uh, with that, I would like to acknowledge, acknowledge uh, my advisor, Professor Jakobsen, and I like Henry for the help of the help -ins. and also for the fellowship fellowships doing my PhD, and also for the ICAM fellowship fellowship that I will support. Thank you for your attention, and I'm not taking questions. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So it depends on the strain, the specific strain pattern that arises. So the strain in takes the trigonal symmetry of boron nitride. Nitri so that's why that's why it is an So that is uh, yes. yes, yes. So I think I have a slide on that. On this. So what happens in our case is that the UXY component of strain is zero and UX is, is not even not Y. So this sort of uh, breaks the strain asymmetry. So this creates sort of an isotropic. And that's why we get this anisotropic potential. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you.